Where are you? Hmm, I can't see her anywhere. <gasps> Hello! You're not V, but I'm happy to see you. V's going to teach us about Easter today. But where is she? Boo! <gasps> Here I am! Hello, V! Hello, Lily the sheep. Sorry I'm late. I took advantage of this beautiful spring day and did some gardening. I see you brought your Bible. Yes! Are you ready to learn about Easter? Yes, we are. While many children are out celebrating Easter, going on hunts and eating chocolate, have you ever stopped to think about what the true meaning of Easter is? Let's find out. Yay! The Bible covers a lot about Easter. So let's see, let's start here. The Last Supper. Jesus wanted to celebrate Passover with his disciples. He told two of them to go into the city and find a man carrying a big jar of water. Wherever the man goes, to follow him and ask if they could celebrate Passover in his home. When evening came, Jesus and all 12 of his disciples gathered at the house to eat and celebrate Passover. During the meal, Jesus stood up and went to grab a bowl of water and a towel. Then he started to wash his disciples' feet. The disciples were a bit confused. They didn't understand why Jesus was doing this. So Jesus said, I have washed your feet as an example for you to follow so that you may do the same to others because you're all servants of God. Back at the dinner table, Jesus was feeling sad. He knew this was going to be his last supper with his friends. He also knew one friend would betray him. Jesus took some bread, blessed it, broke it and gave it to his disciples. And he said, This bread is like my body, which I am willing to break for you. Then he lifted up a cup of wine and said, This wine is like my blood. It will be spilled for many of you. After supper, they sang a hymn and went to the garden. Why did Jesus break the bread and pass the wine to his friends? Well, it's a symbol of what he did for us. The bread reminds us of Jesus' body and the wine reminds us of Jesus' blood. He broke his body and shed his blood for our sins. He took the punishment we all deserved so that we may have eternal life and be in heaven with him. So what happens next? Let's read and find out. After the Passover meal, Jesus and his disciples walked to the Mount of Olives. Jesus said, This very night you will all fall away on account of me. Peter answered, I will never abandon you. Jesus then predicted Peter's denial. Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Jesus then led the disciples into the Garden of Gethsemane and said, Sit here and keep watch while I go and pray. Then Jesus walked a little further away from them and prayed. My father, if it is possible, do not give me this cup of suffering, but do as you will, not as I will. Then Jesus went back and found his disciples asleep. He woke them up and again asked them to keep watch. And twice more, Jesus went to pray. But every time he came back, he would find his disciples asleep. Couldn't you stay awake for one hour just for me? At that point, Judas, one of the 12 disciples, the betrayer, arrived with a great multitude of religious leaders and soldiers. They were carrying swords and clubs. Judas went up to Jesus and gave him a kiss as a signal for the crowd to know who to arrest. Jesus looked at Judas and said, do what you came here for. Angrily, Peter, a disciple, reached for his sword and cut off the ear of the chief priest's servant. No, Peter, ordered Jesus. He placed his hand on the wounded and healed it. You have come with swords. Do you think I'm a criminal? said Jesus. Then the soldiers stepped forward, seized Jesus and arrested him. What did the soldiers do to Jesus after they arrested him? Well, this is the sad part. The soldiers mocked Jesus and they placed a crown of thorns on his head. 
He was then also made to carry his own heavy cross all the way up to the mount where he was crucified. So Jesus went through all of that horrible suffering and died on the cross for us to take away our sins. Yes, he did. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, for whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So, what happens after? Let's continue reading. Jesus was nailed on the cross beside two men who were criminals. They put a sign above his head saying, Jesus, King of the Jews. The soldiers were mocking him, and they divided his garments between them. The people stood looking. They argued, if he is the Christ, he should save himself as he saved others. One of the criminals nailed on the cross beside him mocked him too. Now the other criminal next to him feared the Lord. He said to Jesus, we are guilty, but you have done nothing wrong. Please remember me, Jesus, when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus promised him, you will be with me in paradise today. When Jesus looked down and saw his mother Mary, he knew how much she was suffering and told the disciple next to her who he loved so much to take his mother home. Jesus now knew that all things had been accomplished, that the scriptures were fulfilled. At around three o'clock, he knew that he was about to die. It is finished, he cried. Then the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom the earth quaked and the rocks were split. The soldiers went up to Jesus and one of them poked his side with a spear to prove he was dead. And immediately blood and water came flowing out. Now a man named Joseph took the body of Jesus down from the cross and wrapped him in linen. They laid Jesus in the tomb to rest and shut it tightly with a heavy stone. I'm feeling sad. Jesus didn't deserve that. Jesus already knew what was coming, as it was prophesied. For instance, in Psalm 22, 16, it states, My enemies surround me like a pack of dogs. An evil gang closes in on me. They have pierced my hands and feet. But don't worry, we're getting to a good part now. Remember, all things are possible with God. On the third day after the crucifixion, some soldiers were guarding the tomb when Mary Magdalene and her friend arrived with some spices to anoint the body. Suddenly, there was an earthquake and the angel of the Lord descended from heaven, rolled back the big stone from the door and sat on it. Do not be afraid, said the angel. I know you have come to see Jesus, but he is not here. Go quickly to tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And so they ran to bring his disciples the joyful news. But when they arrived, the disciples did not believe them. They thought they were telling tales. So Peter and John went to see for themselves. They entered the tomb and only found Jesus' clothes lying there and the handkerchief that had been around his head folded in a place by itself. And so the disciples left surprised at what they had seen. But Mary stood outside the tomb weeping. She went inside and found two angels sitting there. They asked her, Why are you crying? Because they have taken my Lord and I don't know where they laid him. As she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus was standing there. Mary, it is me, Jesus. Go and tell my disciples I am going to rise up to my Father in heaven. Two disciples were traveling back home and talking about the events that had happened. Jesus appeared to them and started walking with them. He wondered why they were sad. They did not recognize it was Jesus at first, so they just spoke to him all the way to the village. As it was getting rather late, they asked him to stay. And so they sat and Jesus took some bread, broke it, blessed it and that's when the disciples recognized him it was Jesus they were walking and talking to all along they went back to Jerusalem instantly to tell all the other disciples that Jesus was alive 
Of course, the other disciples already knew because the women had gone to tell them. They all talked excitedly about what had happened, although they doubted to believe it, until Jesus arrived to share a meal with them. Master, is it really you? They cried out. Peace be with you, said Jesus, and he showed them his wounds so that they could believe it was really him. It's truly you, you really are here. They all enjoyed this moment together. There was no doubt anymore that Jesus was really alive. Over the course of a short period of time, Jesus appeared to his disciples many more times, preparing them for what was to come. At last, the day came when Jesus knew that it was time for him to return to his Father in heaven. And so Jesus led his disciples out into the open, lifted up his hands and blessed them. As he was rising up, the disciples seemed troubled. How will we manage without you? They asked. Jesus knew they were ready to take the task. Do not worry, I will send my Holy Spirit to be with you. And they watched Jesus disappear into the clouds and they fell to their knees and worshipped him. He is risen! Yes, he is! He yay. is risen! And this is why we celebrate Easter. Yay, 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 yay! His sacrifice for us was a very important event that happened. Because of Jesus, death is no longer the end. Because of him, our sins are forgiven and we can only try to be better every day. Jesus is so great. Yes, he is. It's good to stop and think about what this time of year is about. What Jesus did on the cross for us on that day. We must remember to always thank him. A big thank you to Jesus. Have a very happy Easter. Happy Easter. Bye. Bye bye. If you liked this video, please subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Thank you.